Hello and welcome. In the last video, we talked about setting up the project environment and we were successful at that. We are going to, sh to shift course and start on the actual project development. Today, we are going to start on the process of data uh, ingestion. Uh, so we will be querying or uh, reading data from the MongoDB uh, data warehouse that uh, we created uh, earlier. Then after that, we will proceed to data validation. And under this, we will uh, tackle or we will validate if we have all the columns. We will also validate the data types uh, for uh, the different uh, variables that uh, we have in our data set. And lastly, we will also check uh, for uh, missing values. Once again, uh, I'm Western Nonzere, and this is Minic Analytics, where we show you how to build, deploy, and monitor your machine learning and AI systems in production. Subscribe, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let's get started. So, in the uh, as in the previous uh, 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 video, so just to do a little, a little bit of a follow up. So, after we did the installation process of the dependencies, and we executed the command or uh, run the command pip inc uh, pip install pip install uh, hyphen r requirements.txt then now uh, we were able to download all the requirements and uh, install them so this is how it will have uh, looked like okay so by this uh, we are good to go we have successfully downloaded and installed all the dependencies that are necessary for this uh, project so let's uh, jump right in and start on the in, uh, data in the data ingestion uh, process so uh, in the readme file so uh, maybe in the readme file uh, i can uh, state the uh, in the readme file so let me state uh, the the general uh, procedure that we are going to be uh, using in this uh, in this uh, project so usually we are going to to start uh, Yesterday we we dealt with the constants. We were able to set all the constants and the such as the utility functions that are necessary for a project. So we are able to do that. Then after after this, then um, the configuration uh, files will follow next. Then after the config files, then uh, we will check for our schema. Uh, that is the data. Then after the schema, we will check for the parameters the params and then after that we will need to convert our code into modular coding so we'll be separating the different entities into their respective uh, sections so we'll start with the uh, configuration entity so conf configure configuration entity and then after that we'll switch then uh, configuration uh, manager then after that uh, we will separate the, the components the components so the different components uh, together so, uh, components then uh, after that again uh, we will uh, now generate the pipeline after the pipeline then now uh, we'll uh, the central place where we can execute the entire code so that is the uh, main.py file then uh, after that we can uh, generate the app.py uh, maybe the streamlit uh, streamlit app uh, the stream uh, streamlit app then now uh, we can now uh, generate a docker image for the uh, for the project so basically this will be the steps that uh, we will be uh, taking while uh, developing this uh, project so let's start now with the uh, with the data ingestion process so yesterday we developed the constants constants so we start uh, with the configuration so let's go to our config.yaml file so this is the config.yaml and uh, specify the configurations that uh, will be that uh, will be necessary for us to ingest uh, import data into our model so in the config.yaml 
So I'm going to set the root directory so that the artifacts to root artifacts uh, root so will be under the artifacts folder. So artifacts. Uh, then we need to uh, do one thing. Uh, we don't want to track uh, this artifacts folder when we are committing our pod to git uh, to the git uh, repository so i'm going to go so in your um, uh, git ignore we need to specify that um, folder specific folder so under git ignore we need to specify the artifacts folder so we just call it artifacts artifacts then now uh, with a slash like this so that means uh, we are not going to commit uh, our artifacts to a uh, git repository so uh, in this in this uh in this tutorial we'll be using uh, a dvc so for the for our artifacts then uh, we'll be using a dvc uh, to track those artifacts so stage number stage number 1 is data ingestion so, so that is the stage number 1 so that we so we are going to create a directory for that so artifacts under the artifacts folder then we create the uh, data ingestion that will be uh, the folder then uh, for, for the uh, remember we are re reading data from um, nope, uh, I forgot something this is supposed to be the root directory so it's supposed to be something like this uh, root uh, so this will be the root directory then uh, after this we need we'll be reading data from the mongodb uh, uh, database so we need the mongo mongo uh, uri so mongo uri then uh, so i'll just uh, paste uh, that uh, uri so this is the uri for for us that will enable us to access that uh, data then we need to specify the database name so database uh, for the database name so we can say uh, that is a database name then we need also to specify the collection name so for the collection name if you remember it's a, it was uh, transfer transformed web chan so trans transformed web chan so that is the collection name so these are the configuration uh, files that uh, we that uh, we need to access so that uh, we can uh, ingest uh, data into into the into the model. So when we talk about uh, the entity, so let's let's go to now experiment. So the first experiment trial trial one data ingestion. So when we we can start. So let us start by importing the necessary uh, libraries. So we can import uh, from uh, data classes. Data classes. Uh, import a data class. Then now uh, we can also import uh, Patlib. So from Patlib, we are going to import Pat. Then uh, we can import uh, PyMongo. So import uh, PyMongo. Then uh, uh, other libraries such as the pandas uh, and uh, such as the pandas, OS, logging, date time uh, will follow. So these are libraries. Then uh, we can also import uh, data from the utility uh, function, from the utility, the commons utility commons so uh, from src uh, dot chan dot uh, utils uh, dot commons then uh, we are going to import uh, the read yaml because we are going to be reading uh, different yaml files and also we are going to be creating uh, various uh, directories also uh, from the constants uh, from src uh, dot uh, chan from constants uh, 
uh, we are also going to import this i'll just use uh, import everything so i'll use the, uh, the asterisks so i think this will be the libraries that uh, we will we'll be requiring uh, when uh, doing the data ingestion uh, so let's create now uh, the structure for defining the structure uh, for data ingestion we usually call this uh, uh, entity the data ingestion uh, entity so this entity essentially holds the configuration settings for data ingestion process and these are the parameters that control the process of data ingestion so the entity it will essentially it includes things like the file paths uh, database connection uh, details that uh, we have specified as well as the collection name batch sizes and all that information so i'll be using a so this will be our entity so i'll use a data class so a data class so we can specify a data ingestion config so a data ingestion config a data ingestion config then from here we specify so whatever we were listing under the data ingestion step in the config.yml file we can just copy this and specify that uh, under this uh, section but uh, we'll do a little bit of uh, a change here here so for this one basically this is the path it will be something like a path so we'll do away with this so the uri will call it uh, we'll specify that uh, it's something like a string um, so the chan again str string collection name this is also will be also a string then uh, i do think we'll be importing data in batches uh, so this is another improvement uh, that i've uh, added so batch size for data um, that's the batch size so i'll be importing data in terms of batches so this one will be int an int and I'll import data, I think, by thousand. Let's go with a thousand. So, but you can uh, insert any integer. So, we'll be importing data by a thousand examples uh, for each run. So, this is our entity. Then, after the entity, we need to create the configuration manager. For the configuration manager this is uh, responsible for loading and managing all configurations of the settings uh, in the in the data ingestion config so essentially it will be reading the the paths uh, to the different yaml files and extracts the information from the yaml files so it will be reading the uh, it will be reading then uh, following the paths to, uh, for example root direct directory so it will be uh, reading this and creating whatever we have uh, provided in the in the in the entity so we are going to create create the configuration manager to handle that so this one i'll use a plus a data ingestion so it will be a data ingestion class then uh, we can say def init self config then uh, from here we can uh, specify the uh, data ingestion config this one here so that uh, it's able to access that and re uh, read and extract information from the different parts that we have uh, specified in the entity uh, section so config, config, that's okay so after this and then we create a method to fetch the data from uh, mongodb so I'm going to specify the method. Uh, so you're going to import the data from MongoDB. MongoDB, I think that is correct. Well, that's okay. So uh, then we can add some uh, time component so that uh, we are able to specify 
at which time we are able to import that uh, data so from here i will uh, insert the try else block and then uh, go to the try else uh, the try accepts so try and accepts try accept this will be exception exception as e then uh, logging error raise e so that's okay no ah, i think that is fine so we are going to use the, the logging uh, module so under this uh, the try else we are going to now start the connection process so we are going to first up connect mongodb so our client uh, mongo mongo client config.mongo uri so we'll be uh, reading from uh, the mongo uri and the, the mongo uri we have, we have provided in the configuration files so that's the mongo uri then uh, we'll be reading from the client db client then we have provided the database name then for the collection uh, that is the collection collection name okay then uh, we can log some information that uh, will essentially be telling us that uh, we have actually started the data ingestion process so after reading uh, logging being after logging uh, into the database then we need to download or fetch the data and process the data uh, download or fetch the data and uh, as, I, as i had said earlier we are going to do that in uh, batches so uh, like uh, the batch so we have stated the batch size so this is the batch size so we'll, at every run we'll be importing only a thousand examples of that okay then now we can create an empty data frame uh, to store all the data after this we create an empty data frame to store all the data okay then uh, i will um, So when we import this data there are some things that uh, we will be uh, doing for example um, it, it will contain an uh, uh, we need to i'm forgetting something so while true we need faster let me do away with this eh? at first we need to create a new create a casa for each batch so let me uh, do that get a uh, casa for each batch so uh, you can say casa then uh, selection put uh, find then uh, so this will just enable us to uh, be reading the data in, the, in, uh, in batches so this one is most common if you have if you have a large uh, data set and importing that in a single in a single shot uh, becomes uh, impossible so you can uh, import data in batches With a batch num, then we can see batch size. So I think this will be able to calculate how many batches we are going to import the data. So if it is in three batches, if it is in three batches, four batches, and so on. So this is the batch uh, batch size. And uh, after we import the data, we need to convert the data into a pandas uh, data frame. So create a new variable a uh, df. Uh, so a uh, pd uh, data frame. Then uh, and list casa so that uh, then from here we can specify that uh, if the, the data frame is empty, if a uh, df is empty. Then from here we can uh, in place our break statement. Uh, yeah, I think it's okay. So if 
then now we can drop the id column so drop uh, mongodb internal id field if present in our data so we'll be dropping that then now uh, we can append all the batches and uh, log that information so we can append the batches to uh, all data frame so those batches so remember we are putting data in batches so we need to append those batches to create a single uh, data frame so that uh, oh, that uh, that we are calling that all the data so from that i think that's okay then we need to save the data frame to a csv file in the root directory let me just copy what i had uh, done earlier so we need supposed to be in line yeah so we need to now after importing our data we need to save the data to a csv file in the root directory so the root directory that uh, we are specifying in our uh, configuration uh, file so output path so we are saving the data as a web channel uh, csv then uh, the data in the whole data we are using we are converting that to our csv then we are saving that in the output path the output path uh, then we'll call our data web channel csv then we'll just log some information uh, to tell us that uh, that process is uh, completed uh, successfully so i'm going to add a little uh, other metrics that uh, will enable us to query to see if uh, that process is successful so remember we had the starting time and the timestamp so we need to save, save those as the metadata for data ingestion so we are going to save that as a metadata the end time so end time uh, timestamp this is the start time and the start time timestamp then after this is done we will have the end time and the end time uh, timestamp then we will calculate the duration then uh, create a list uh, in a json format for the metadata including the time stamp the starting time the end time the duration uh, total records after we have imported our data then the data source uh, collection name so uh, collection name from the mongodb uh, database then the output path then we are going to save our uh, metadata provide a logging information for that then uh, this will will consider this as the uh, monitoring uh, metrics so once this is done i think uh, we, we will have import successfully imported our data so let me just check if everything is okay we read yaml um it's a directories what did we use uh, uh, nope so there's something that uh, we missed under the configuration uh, manager that's uh, data ingestion so we skipped uh, the configuration manager we started the data ingestion process so we need to include the configuration manager plus to manage the data configurations uh, sorry for that so let's uh, include that uh, so this is supposed to be the data ingestion component so this is supposed to be uh, data ingestion so data data ingestion component so we need to create the uh, configuration manager let me just copy whatever i had uh, done earlier and then i can just paste it so this is the uh, configuration manager class to manage the configurations as usual as i had uh, said earlier it is responsible for leading for loading and managing all configurations all the settings configurations as well as uh, reading uh, those uh, uh, configuration uh, settings so for example uh, for this case like we have the read yaml so what it's going to do is uh, it will be it will be reading the paths to different uh, yaml files that as we have uh, specified here and uh, extracts the information from those uh, yaml files so when it extracts those information that information will be used now while doing the data ingestion component 
So we'll be reading data from the config.yaml file that we have created here. Uh, also for the parameters, uh, for the params, this one here, but because we have not uh, we have not yet doing we have not yet reached the data i think for the parameters that is the model trainer so let's uh just uh, fill this with arbitrary values so key and value so that uh when it reads this uh, file it's not going to uh, print out an error so we are going to repeat the same for the schema so uh, key and a value that uh, we are not getting any errors uh, from that so going back so this will be read the configuration files to initialize the configuration parameters then after that we need to create uh, the, the directories so remember in the config.yami we need to create this directory before we save our our data the web channel before we save uh, uh, this data because we are going to query the mongodb database and uh, import this data so once we import this data we need to save it in a, in, a, in a directory. So before saving it, we need to create that directory and that will be handled in the, in the configuration by the configuration manager. So it will create this directory for us to enable us to store the data. Then after that, uh, creating this uh, method, this uh, will, uh, this uh, this is under the configuration manager so this method will actually perform the actual uh, the task under the configuration manager will be handled by this uh, this method here for example uh, creating this directory uh, reading the mongo db uri uh, the data accessing the database uh, the database and then uh, the collection then uh, doing this patch up uh, importing of the data itself okay so that is the configuration manager so when we look let me go to the readme file so you can see the steps that we have you have uh, taken setting up the configuration files the schema the params then the configuration entity the configuration manager uh, yeah so the next step will be about the components as we progress so that's it um, so this is the entity um i think we are good so the next thing that we need to end this is the the if else the the block the main the main block so we are going to uh, this is the main block so at first we initialize the configuration manager then we get the get data ingestion config then after that we actually do the data ingestion process when we import the data and then uh, from there uh, the result the resulting the, res the output will be us creating a folder in the artifacts that will be housing the data that we will have uh, imported from uh, the mongodb uh, database so that's it um, so let's execute uh, this uh, this process so i'll just create a new just create a new terminal and uh, copy the relative path uh, for that then Python experiment trial this so I'm going to execute this so that uh, let's see if we we are going to import the data so what we do expect is we will be forming a data the artifacts folder so that will be the first thing that uh, you will see the artifacts folder will be formed then after we have imported the data in batches, then uh, yeah, now you can see uh, root directory. Uh, we are able to import the data. So uh, YAML file params loaded successfully. You can see that uh, the schema uh, YAML loaded successfully. Then we created the directory at the artifacts. So this one here, you can see we created the data ingestion uh, directory uh then now uh, we started uh, ingesting the data you can see starting data ingestion from the mongodb collection fetched batch one a thousand records batch two a thousand records but batch three a thousand records so that's about three thousand uh it's about uh ten thousand uh, we were using a thousand or uh, ten thousand 
about uh, 10,000. It's, it's supposed to be yeah, 10,000 uh, uh, batches. So in 10,000, so 10, 20, 30, then about 36,000. After that, you can see data fetched from MongoDB and saved to the artifacts, data ingestion, web and CSV. Then the total records you can see it's about 36,000. 992 records or examples from our data then we also save our metadata then we can see that the ingestion speed uh, records per second uh, then the data volume then uh, data ingestion to mongodb uh, from mongodb completed so again you can see that we have our artifacts then uh, from the artifacts data ingestion folder we created then this is the metadata from that you can see this is the metadata then also the web chan a CSV, the CSV file. So I think the uh, the data ingestion process is working uh, smoothly. So after we are done with this, then uh, we need now so to convert it to a modular code. So for the modular uh, coding, modular will be splitting this across different processes uh, into the respective uh, uh, clusters. So we start with the entity. So I'll just copy the entity. Then I'll go to uh, entity folder config entity. Then I'll just paste it here. Remember, we do need to import uh, the, the necessary libraries. So I think that will be the path, uh, the data class, and the path. I think that's okay. So we are done with that. So that is the data config entity. Config entity entity so that's okay the next step is the configuration manager so the first way you can just copy this eh? then uh, config entity we are done with that so that's the config configuration then i'll just um, paste it here but i'll try to only work with what is necessary so time logging and os these are not uh, necessary uh, then uh, date time again is not uh, necessary PyMongo, oops. Uh, PyMongo and PD, the pandas, those are not necessary. Then the entity is again it's not uh, necessary. Uh, data class, again, this one, we'll just uh, do away with this. So, config file path, I'll try to uh, do this. That's okay. Self, yeah, initialize the configuration manager. Then we need to import this. Uh, so again, we'll say from src uh, dot chan dot uh, uh, importing this from the entity uh, dot uh, config entity. We're going to import data ingestion config. So uh, data ingestion config. It's okay. Um, another thing that we are missing, I don't think so. Can, uh, so, any error? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. I think everything is okay. Uh, byte size 10,000. So, in our in the entity, we need to again, it's supposed to be a thousand. It's supposed to be a thousand. So after the entity, the next will be uh, entity configuration manager. Then the next will be the components. So components will be I'll just again copy everything and go to the components. So the first component is the data ingestion component. So for the comp data ingestion component, we don't need uh, that. We only need the class data ingestion data ingestion and the rest is uh, null and void uh, again we need to import the config then uh, the, from the data no from src uh, dot chan and uh, supposed to be entity uh, dot uh, config entity import data Injection configuration, that injection config. That's okay. Injection config, everything remains the same. 
but uh, not the if the main block element so i think uh, this one are we need this uh, then we don't need this Data ingestion, are we missing anything? Let's just confirm. Uh, I don't think so. Everything is uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. So after that, we need to create our pipeline. So for the pipeline, and that will be the first pipeline, a uh, data ingestion uh, pipeline. So pipelines, data ingestion pipeline. So we are going to import some libraries. We just so we import the login, then the configuration manager, then the data ingestion config. That's the uh, from the components. Okay. Then we just created a pipeline name, data ingestion pipeline. Then we create a class for the data ingestion. Then uh, essentially, what we are placing uh, inside the, this function run is whatever is uh, this section. So the steps. So I consider these as the steps. That you are going to instruct your code to while executing the data ingestion a component so that's the pipeline then uh, we also have the main block uh, at this uh, point again so after this is done uh, we move on to the main dot pi uh, so this will be something like a trigger where when you execute the main dot pi file uh, it will uh, execute the entire uh, code process. So for me again, we're going to import uh, SRC. No, supposed to be uh, from SRC uh, dot chan. Going to import uh, logging. Then uh, we import the pipeline. So uh, from uh, SRC dot uh, chan dot uh, pipelines uh, so it will be the first pipeline pip data ingestion uh, import uh, data ingestion pipeline then now uh, we create a name for the component so we can say com component uh, 01 uh, provide a name for that so that will be the data ingestion component so data Ingestion component, data ingestion component. Then I'll just again use the try except block. So then uh, we can uh, some login message, login data info. And here we can specify. Login.info uh, component number one has started, then a data ingestion pipeline, data ingestion run the data ingestion pipeline, then uh, logging information component one terminated successfully. Okay, then we are uh, closing, we are activating uh, this in the try except uh, so that uh, we are able to raise any errors if they arise. So I think that's it. Uh, we are done with the data ingestion component. So to, to ensure that after we are done with the separation and only execute the code now from the source, source folder SRC, uh, then we need to run the main.py. So this will tell us if we have uh, if the separation into the distinct uh, components is uh, successful. Again, I uh, think that uh, we can see that the data ingestion component has started. So that we can see fetching the patches. Batch one, batch two, batch three. Um, also, after we are done with this, uh, I will uh, we'll be using the dvc.yaml to track uh, this pipeline so that uh, the next scenario we don't need to 
when we run the data validation a component we don't need to again start importing all these uh, starting uh, then query the database to import the, the data itself so to make that to be null and void so we need to use to track our pipeline so before we track our pipeline we need to run the dvc so you uh, you initialize the dvc so dvc init um, we need to initialize the dvc first so run the command uh, dvc init to initialize the dvc then from there we need to create a new file uh, the dvc.yaml so this so we have initialized the dvc so we need uh, after this we need to create so when you initialize the dvc you get the dvc uh, ignore and as well as uh, this dot uh, dvc file so to again prevent uh, there are some files that uh, we don't need uh, to be tracked uh, by uh, by git so we are going to specify those files in the git ignore so again in the git ignore uh, git ignore git ignore where is uh, my git ignore so in the git ignore we are going to add uh, this file uh, so that uh, we are not going to track it by uh, dvc so this is a dvc it is a dvc file eh? dot dvc so this dot dvc file is the one that we are not going to be tracking with our git okay so that's it so main dot file we don't need that so let me uh, clear my workspace so after you do after uh, initializing your um, uh, dvc uh, dvc we need your uh, dvc then we need to create a new file that file is the uh, dvc.yaml so just create a new file dvc.yaml and in the dvc.yaml uh, we need to specify the, the different uh, stages so stages so we specify the stages so stage number one will be the data uh, ingestion stage so data ingestion uh, stage under the data ingestion stage we need uh, to specify what is the command for the data ingestion? The command will be uh, Python. Then uh, we need to specify uh, the pipeline, so the, the data ingestion pipeline. So to run the data ingestion process, we need just to execute the data ingestion uh, pipeline. So that is the command. Then uh, we need to specify the dependence. So dependence. So the dependence. Uh, this include. Oops. Sorry. Uh, the dependence. The dependence will be uh, this one here. So this will. Be from our the dependence so need to be very careful uh, with this uh, slash it's supposed to be the forward slash because this is a, a yaml file so we need to use the forward slashes and that's it as i see churn pipeline so dependent dip, dependency is the first dependent then uh, the second one is, is the config uh, the the config.yaml file so that's our second dependent so we have specified the dependencies for the data ingestion then we need to specify what is the output so the outputs uh, you can just refer the output from the artifacts data ingestion uh, data ingestion uh, directory so the you can just copy the first output is the metadata so ensure that uh, you are using the forward slash then uh, the second is the web channel csv that will be the second output from the first 
from the first uh, component which is the data ingestion component so we need just to ensure everything is okay we're not supposed to be getting these errors Yeah, I think everything is okay. Then see, yeah. Okay, I think, I think, I think it's okay at the moment. Python SRC, dependency, that's okay. Config.yaml, these are the outputs that we are getting from that. So I think that's okay. Now to track uh, this first stage, we need to run the uh, DVC repro that uh, we can able to reproduce the first uh, pipeline so. dvc repro so that uh, we, uh, we can uh, track these uh, these uh, stages so that uh, when we run the the, when we run the uh, data validation, we we won't uh, uh, dvc uh, dvc dot yaml. <laughs> so this file should be outside the source folder. Okay, so we can move it. Should be outside the SLC folder, that's why it was not, it was not being uh, located, so it should be outside. Yeah, that's okay. Should be outside the SRC folder. So let's just uh, do that again. Should be outside the SLC folder. So essentially, we are going to track uh, the our pipeline uh, using the DVC using the DVC. They're using the DVC repro command, it's essentially DVC reproduce to so track this so that uh, we are able to reproduce if need uh, this um, pipeline if uh, need be. So when you when we execute this, we are just supposed to be getting this a similar output when we were doing the yaml dot uh, when we are running the main.py so this is something like a substitute for that so you can see it's, uh, it's now executing uh, we can see that uh, we are almost getting the similar things uh, as uh, as previous so again you can see uh, in for yaml file params loaded successfully schema loaded successfully uh, then you can see we are able to access our uh, database then uh, create the directory create these artifacts uh, then uh, fetches our data in batches then uh, mongodb completed data ingestion pipeline done uh, then that's it so after this we need to we'll have the dvc.log and this file uh, contains something like uh, the hash keys for the, the the pipeline so if there is no change uh, if you are not going to be making changes during the data ingestion then um, uh, we won't be we we'll just be skipping that uh, step we won't be running that step over and over again so in some way it's going to save us a lot of time so we need to uh, push uh, this uh, the dvc.log as well as the dvc.yaml we need to track those with our git but uh, the only thing that we're not tracking with our git is uh, this uh, dvc file okay then uh, to enable auto staging we can uh, run uh, this one so that uh, then we can use the dvc push to send the updates to a remote storage but uh, i think we'll use this especially when we are uh, when we are we are at the when we are co configuring the data i think the when we are at the model uh, trainer then uh, we'll uh, 
will uh, try to use this but at the moment i'm not going to use the dvc for auto staging but i'll just track the dvc.log and the dvc.yaml so i'm going to push uh, this stage and then i push to git repository so use the git add so that uh, git add uh, git status so to ensure that uh, there are some files that uh, we did not want to be pushed to, to git uh, git so that is the artifacts folder so let's sure let's ensure that we don't have the active artifacts folder so we modify modified the git ignore we also modified the config.yaml dvc.log these are the new files that uh, we created when using the dvc then uh, again these are what we modified okay so as you can see we are not we are not uh, committing the uh, this dot uh, dvc and we are not co committing the artifacts uh, folder so we can do the git commit uh, hyphen m and from here we can say data ingestion complete then uh, for this you can do the git push so git uh, git push uh, hyphen u origin main so in case uh, if you want if you you will not want to track let's say for example the dvc.ignore dvc config then uh, you can just you can just run a command that uh, instructs uh, git to not uh, track those uh, files but at the moment uh, if that will only work with that if uh, they if need be okay so i think we have now uh, pushed that so we can uh, check with our uh, git so the, our commit was uh, data ingestion complete you can see we uh, data ingestion complete so that's uh, that's okay no problem with that so that's uh, that's how we can uh, ingest data into our model so you can see uh, the different steps that uh, we did so we tried uh, in the trial we were able to write the necessary steps uh, the entity the entity we created the configuration manager to read uh, the files then we actually did the data ingestion component itself where we are actually doing the data ingestion uh, process you can see that we used batch uh, batch process uh, batch processing to import the data to the model uh, then we are able to save some uh, metadata about the process, the data, the time it takes uh, to uh, ingest data into the model. Then we are able to save that metadata. Then uh, lastly, we could see how we separated the different components into their respective uh, units for easier scalability and easy managing of our code. Then uh, we were able to use the DVC to track the, pip the pipeline. So this will enable us uh track the pipeline as well as uh, uh be quick in terms of uh, developing our our project because uh, those redundant uh, uh, necessary steps uh, we don't need to repeat them over and over again so that's it about uh, the data uh, ingestion in the next step or in the next phase we are going to start with our uh, data validation okay so see you in the next one